This is Crispin. He is eight years old. Three years ago, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. At that time, he came into hospital very sick. In the emergency room, he was found to have very high blood sugar levels and was diagnosed with diabetes. Ever since then, he has had to have insulin injections every day and will need to do this for the rest of his life. Crispin is typical of someone with type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is what is called an autoimmune condition. And what autoimmune means is that the body's own immune system turns inwards and attacks an organ of the body. And there are lots of different examples of that, such as thyroid disease or rheumatoid arthritis. In diabetes, the autoantibodies attack the pancreas. And in particular, they attack the cells that produce insulin. It's called an islet cell antibody. And we don't know what triggers this. It's usually onset in children. It's more likely to happen if you have a family history of autoimmune diseases. And it's thought that there is an environmental trigger factor. So someone who's got a little bit increased risk anyway sees a virus and it triggers off this autoimmune attack. And within weeks, the pancreas goes from producing normal insulin to producing zero insulin. And these, it's usually children, but it can be adults, usually get sick quite quickly. Their symptoms of diabetes are quite acute and they need insulin injections. There's no other treatment for them. As soon as they start injections, they go back to normal. And someone with type 1 diabetes should, you know, expect to have a pretty normal adult life, provided they take their injections regularly and they're well controlled. Crispin and his mother are now having a one-to-one -one session with the children's diabetes nurse. Because recently, Crispin's blood sugar levels have been high when he comes to the clinic. Mm -hmm. For one daily, 87 milligrams per deciliter. That's not enough sugar. As part of a general review to try to find out why he has high sugar, he is revising how he should be doing his insulin injection. It is important when teaching a child or an adult how to do their injection to have their guardians present, because there is a lot to remember. It is important to wash your hands and make sure the skin where the injection will be given is clean. To draw up the insulin, turn the bottle upside down and draw out the correct number of units. Insulin loses its activity when it's warm. So, hold the bottle by the neck, so it is not warm by your hand. If you are injecting both soluble and lente insulin, at the same time, draw up the soluble insulin first, then the lente. In reality, Crispin has become good at giving himself injections. He first learned by practicing with an orange. Then, along with other children with diabetes, he learned to inject himself. The insulin injection has to be given into the subcutaneous tissue. In other words, the tissue just beneath the skin, not into the muscle. Pinching the skin makes sure the injection does not go accidentally too deep and into the muscle. The injection should be given straight and the needle left in place for two or three seconds before removing. The easiest places to inject are in the thigh and the stomach. If someone is helping, you can also put it into your upper arm. No. 
At home, it is Crispin who normally gives himself the injections. After injecting, the syringe should be covered and left somewhere safe and clean, a high covered, for example, until the next injection. The insulin bottles should be kept covered and cool. If you have a fridge, the insulin should be stored there. If there is no fridge, as at Crispin's house, the insulin can be stored in a clay pot containing water. Put the insulin in a small bag, tie the top and put it in the water. It is important to keep your empty bottle as the pharmacist will need it when you go to collect your refill. When the syringe becomes blunt, the injections will become painful. That means it is time to start on a new syringe. The old syringe should be disposed of so no one else can find it and prick themselves with it. Either throw it down a pit latrine or burn it on a fire. It seems that Crispin is doing his injections well. The nurse also discusses his diet with him and it seems the diet is satisfactory. The likely reason for Crispin's poor diabetic control is that as he is growing, he requires a higher dose of insulin. The dose of insulin is based on the patient's body weight. The average daily insulin requirement is between half and one unit of insulin per kilogram of body weight per day. When we start patients on insulin, we usually start with half a unit per kilogram per day, divided into two doses. Two-thirds of this is given in the morning and one-third in the evening. The injections should be given half an hour before food and 12 hours apart. If the patient is mixing soluble and lenter insulins, then two-thirds should be given as lente and one-third as soluble. It is easier for patients if the doses are kept simple. In adults, this often means the dose can be a multiple of five. So, here are some typical starting doses of insulin for children and adults. Mixing the two types of insulin gives better glycemic control and so produces insulin levels through the day which are closer to those the pancreas will produce naturally. The peak activity of lente insulin is after about 6 hours and it wears off after 12 hours. The peak activity of soluble insulin is approximately 1 to 2 hours after subcutaneous injection and it wears off after about six hours. So the two complement each other to give insulin when it is needed after main meals. Crispin now weights 40 kilograms. We recalculated his insulin dose and he is now taking 20 units per day, 15 in the morning and five in the evening. I'm
kila nchi mtu mwe mtu mwe mwe kachu walo kama ni kama pangisa kuti sugar ya tu Crisping comes every month to the children's diabetes clinic. There, he and his parents can meet with other families who have children living with diabetes and receive advice on day-to-day -day issues such as diet, play, school and growing up with diabetes. In the following months, Crisping's glucose control greatly improved. This story illustrates the importance of reviewing glycemic control and adjusting the dose in children. They will require increasing doses until they stop growing. Once they reach adulthood, their insulin dose remains pretty much the same for the rest of their life. When Crispin's parents first found out that he was diabetic, it was a real shock. But they found the more they learn about diabetes, the easier it is to help Crispin make the changes he needs to grow up healthily. I'm president of the Anangwalebaso so, for Crispin, there is no reason why he should not be able to grow up and achieve what he wants. <laughs> Because I go, I'm not going to do this. I'm 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 going to do